of the direct results of the housing law 1949 and the 1970 regulations is that we have this perpetual proportion of 10,000 people, a fifth of the working population of the island, who do not have housing qualifications. Now, your plan will not house them. It doesn't, it may fiddle at the edges, it might improve the lot of some of them at the edges. The landlords might not be very keen with some of the proposals you've got in here. But that's not acceptable, is it? 10,000 people, working adults, year after year they're here, and they don't, they're not even entitled. And the, the, the financial result of that is that 10,000 rents are effectively taken out of the housing pool. They're not building any new units. That's going into property owners' property pockets. That's what needs to be done. But that's the system we have in place at the moment, um, in inverted commas, to try and control the population. Is, is housing the right way to control the population? That's the question that needs to be debated. Well, of course, we the, have a mature debate about that. The 1980 judgment of the Royal Court, uh, Judge Creel said that the housing law should not be used to control the population or immigration controls. That's specifically what he said, but nobody's ever taken any notice of that judgment. I don't know and why. We need to have that mature discussion as we look at how, because this council is one of its aims, apart from housing the community, and I'm doing my bit, I hope, towards that, is um, to actually control the population. And, and we're working towards that. We've got a lot of work to do. You can't undo and change um, 20 years of, of different thinking. Well, the end of this year, the, uh, the population, what do they call it, the control document, the list of everybody in the island, where they're working, where they're living, is being drawn up. And that's promised for us that it'll be yeah. not com entirely complete, but December is the critical point. It will be started then. I mean, that document runs in conjunction with basically abolishing the housing department as such, and it all finishes up under minister, council, uh, the chief minister's control yeah. in a rather... Uh, rather unworked out uh, prescription. We don't quite know how it's going to work. Nobody quite knows. But these reforms are going to happen this year. These are fairly fundamental yeah, reforms. We're going, we're going to get a lot more accurate information um, about actually who is in Jersey. Uh, okay, we have the sense of that, but we're going to actually have names, addresses, and they'll be sharing of information at, at the very basic level, but sharing of information in terms of names and addresses with social security, income tax, won't be about incomes, just names and addresses, income tax and um, But the, so. one of the purposes is to identify everywhere where anybody sleeps, Absolutely. anybody. Absolutely. It could be sleeping on somebody's couch, it could be sleeping on somebody's floor in their garage, all sorts of weird and wonderful arrangements will come to light. Yeah. Is there going to be an amnesty for all these weird and wonderful arrangements? We all need to see the extent of the problem before we can decide that. But it is not about where people sleep, but you're quite right, it will identify that. It's about who's here. Yes, and then that's again coupled with the the way they're going to apply that new the new powers, whether they should be here, whether they should be working. These sort of the for mere mortals like me, it seems a rather frightening scenario. You doesn't you don't have any worries about that no, from a human rights point of view. No, I don't, because all we're doing is sharing the basic information. You know, we'll, we'll not know um, things like income or anything like that. If a person appears for example, is working, but doesn't appear in any address for living. If they're working here, they've got to be living somewhere. Those are the sort of queries we've had. They should be paying income tax. I don't know what level they should be paying, but they should be <coughs> at least return, uh, making a return, shouldn't they? E even if they're not earning enough to pay income tax, they should be making a return. That's important. The inevitable, from my perspective, the most important section of the badly housed are the 10,000 people without qualifications. Now that's the biggest need, that's the biggest area of need. It's all very well to say there are 500, 600 people on, on a, some sort of a housing yeah. queue list, yeah. but that's only a tip of the iceberg. The real problem is the 10,000 people, isn't yeah. it? The only hope I can offer them at the moment, because there's a lot of work to do, and I could promise to try and do everything and achieve nothing, uh, because we're dabbling in everything. I've, I've set store with my white paper, I'm going to go ahead with the the consultation, listen to what people say, and I'm um, already getting some feedback. And you know, it's very early days yet. But the the other bit of work, I think, the only hope I can give for for those people at the present time is that I do think we need to have some legislation around minimum of standards of accommodation, whether they're qualified or unqualified, and um, that is something that I am pretty keen on working on. 
it's what other places tend to have isn't it those sort of uh, constraints yeah. on exploitation do exist in other places yeah. I mean, uh, and I think that's right and that it's something that uh, I have already raised it's nothing new I'm not just saying this for, because you're talking to me um, I have already raised I've already said it's an interest I've already spoken to environmental health um, and it is something that I am going to pursue again the one the, the all issues are interlinked but the the how the health department document on care in the community and so on the implication of that in again it sounds like a user page but trying to encourage people to live in their own homes with disabilities and so on again so much housing stock in Jersey is not really fit for purpose on many grounds. It may be under-insulated, it may not be accessible housing. This, the potential problems, if we're going to have a fairer housing regime, are huge, aren't they? They really are well, there, extraordinary. There, there are some big challenges, and uh, you're quite right about the, the insulation of homes. Um, that, and that's going to become even more important, not only from an environmentally um, environmental point of view but also from the cost point of view for the for the tenants or the owners even um, running their homes the more energy we waste the more we have to generate and the more it costs uh, so that, that's one piece of work and uh, we, we have to look at having we call them um, lifelong homes and people think I'm talking about over 50s I'm not actually when I talk about it I'm talking about a home that someone can move into who then, who is fit perhaps, and then circumstances change, but because it's fully accessible, they don't have to, to um, move. You may have to do work around kitchens. I've done quite a lot of work on that. It's actually cheaper to build a kitchen adapted to a person's need than buy a so-called all singing, all dancing, adjustable kitchen. It's not, it's actually very expensive and not that practical it's cheaper to buy, uh, build a kitchen to suit a person's needs. So there may be some adaptions there, but we need to have wider doors. I, you're the expert on that. Well, it well, amazes me personally that we all start off our life being pushed around in a pram I mean, and that we haven't noticed these yeah. things by the time we get to yeah. the age of two, that these things are necessary for everybody. Yeah. It's it nothing was, unusual, is it? It was quite an eye-opener for me. Unfortunately, my son had a very serious road accident when he was nine. And um, please to say he's made a very good recovery physically. You wouldn't know um, if you saw him walking along the street. But when I was wheeling him around town in his wheelchair for the first time, um, it was quite an eye opener for yeah. me. And, uh, and things have significantly improved, I know. But I'm sure there's still lots but of But when you're talking about housing stock fit for purpose, it will include all those things. Absolutely. And it must. It's essential. If we're going to keep people housed in the community, which you say is user paid, I actually think when you speak to um, people, they want to stay in their own home as, as long as possible. But in that, to enable them to do that, we've got to have the right environment and the community support. You know, that's something health will have to tackle um, because you can't provide, if people need care, it has to be provided. You can't pretend it's been provided and ignore that. that that's something that will have to come back from house green paper and eventually their white paper. When, when, when the old paper. rent rebate scheme, as it was called, was introduced by Deputy Norman when he was housing president. He was constable and I think he was deputy or senator then. But anyway, the principle was introduced in order to encourage private developers to either develop or make available their accommodation to rent so that they would get more profit and that would therefore create more units of habit accommodation. Whether that's been successful or not, I don't know. But all it meant is that there is this culture of subsidy to private owners of property in order that they can rent it. You know, this is the social argument. They are, they are effectively social providers of social housing with their private suppliers. I cannot see how you're going to get away from that. I don't see how you're going to level up that. If you're going to raise now your public housing, the state's housing stock rents, which is what you're going to do, the inevitable consequences, because there is, you speak to people and they say, oh, we're living in private accommodation in a snobby sort of way, that's more desirable than state's accommodation, therefore private accommodation should be more expensive. It's a sort of, a, of an absurd jerk reaction. I've never heard that before, to be honest, Mike, um, and I'm actually quite saddened that people feel that. Um, has the, has the rent rebate scheme in the private sector worked? I don't think it has actually. Um, I, I understand the reasons for doing it and I understand um, 
the the um, the why the sorry the president. I'm trying to think of the title at the time. The president committee and, and the housing committee of the time did it, but has it achieved all that it was meant to achieve? I don't think it has. Well, as I say, it's, it starves the natural housing market of funds. These yeah. people should be building their own houses to rent or live in them for themselves is what should be happening. And, of course, it applies right across somebody living in lodges in a house or in a lodging house. They can all claim the rent rebate under the income support scheme. Yeah. So it's, it's right across. It's so entrenched now into the Jersey uh, economic society that I don't know how you're going to get Well, I know the Social Security Minister is looking at that, but I guess I force that issue by, by paper, really. Uh, the numbers game. Now you've made you've you've emphasized how many substandard uh, units of accommodation there are. You've emphasized how many empty units of accommodation there are. Is, do you think anybody is really getting to grips with the whole picture about the? Uh, is there the, 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 uh, as a regular headline we used to see on the JP light at the end of the tunnel? And they, uh, they've stopped doing it because they obviously got fed up with printing it, but. Realistically, is there ever going to be any light at the end of this tunnel? Because the demand, whether we've got an increasing population or not, but the demand, regardless of whether we have an increasing population, seems to be proverbially forever there. It's not satisfied, is it? If you're asking me, do I think I can ever get rid of the waiting list? The answer is no. Do I think I can give people hope that they won't be on the waiting list for so long? The answer is yes. Um, but it's, it's not a short-term investment. This, if my white paper is accepted, adapted though it may be, depending on the consultation, if it is accepted, um, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel for the current people, but there'll be new people replacing them. What I would say is that I hope they won't be, one, they'll have economic homes to run, that'll be dry, um, wind tight, and uh, nice and warm at a reasonable price um, and that that um, commodity won't be as scarce as, it, uh, as no. it has been. But will I have get rid of the waiting list? No. Oh. And of course it is only the waiting list that comes to your door, it's not the, the whole island waiting list because... Well, the waiting list is a false picture anyway because there's it. many people I won't allow to join it currently, like the under 25s. It's uh, one of the characteristics of housing, not just in Jersey, but the substandard quality of the houses which were built. You're renovating now Pondor Farm, which are not very old properties. They shouldn't need renovating so early in their life. You've demolished the, uh, the properties at Ham Place. They were very substandard. I've const I'm in touch with this department about various people who live in states housing, which is less than 20 years old, which yeah. they find very difficult to keep well, warm well, and so on. Let's tackle Tom Pondor Farm first. I mean, the construction of Pondor Farm was sound, and is sound, which is why we're renovating it. But of course, in those days, you didn't insulate. That was the biggest problem with Pondor Farm. Yes, the, roof, the roofs um, had reached the end of their natural life, and we put that right. And so had the windows. They were the old um, crittle windows. And um, they were the bee's knees of the, of the time. And of course, we've changed to something different now. But the main thing for me was how expensive they were to heat and not heat very well. Um, and, but you didn't put insulation in. I can remember, I've never been in the building trade, but I've done quite a lot of work on my own properties over the years. And you never thought of putting insulation in lofts 30 years ago, might I suggest. Or you might just be thinking about it. The more informed might have done it, but most ordinary people wouldn't. So Pondor Farm was about, um, I, I describe it as putting a tea cosy over the building and, and updating. So I'm quite comfortable with that. And court, um, I understand from the officers that that was built in a substandard way. The actual structure was fine, but the foundations weren't right. Now, I... I don't know, I wasn't around in those days. Mistakes like that shouldn't happen when you've got professional people advising you, but it did. The question is, of course, are those mistakes, relative, similar, equivalent mistakes happening now? Are they happening I now? hope not. Um, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning fast, getting professional advice in. I hope we're building for the future. There are some that say we should build cheap and just replace. 
I actually want to build for the future. Well, when I came to Jersey in the 1960s, the sort of loft insulation was about one inch, if you put yes, any in at all. Like that, yeah. They're now talking about zero carbon emission design in the UK. That just legislation will come this way, which is walls which have got so much insulation in them that will be the thickness of an old Jersey granite wall. Yeah. That's the way, that's the trend. That's what just, that will happen here. Yeah, it is a trend, and, uh, and rightly so. And, but it's, it's economy, I think, that's driving that as much as anything else. People just cannot afford to spend the money on fuel that they've been spending. So I think that's driving that as well. But, you know, the more you put double glazing in, the, the more, unless you insulate properly, then you create even greater problems with condensation because the moisture in the air has to go somewhere and it will condense on the walls unless you've insulated them. The realistic figure has been banded about that houses should be available to buy at £200,000, three-bedroom house in Jersey. Is that an attainable uh, price range, do you think? Not without a lot of work. Um, you know, we, we've got to be a little bit creative around that now. I know the planning minister thinks we can do that, and I hope he's right. Um, probably the only way you can do that is by removing the price of the land to be honest, and uh, you may have to come up with a different way of money. There, There's an out-of-work Irishman on the net who claims to have built his house for £25,000 and to comply with all modern standards. Something magic going on in Ireland, do you think? Probably got some land for nothing, I would say. Well, even to build, to build a structure for 25000 yeah. that's quite an achievement, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He probably built it himself. He built it himself. Didn't, didn't pay any labour or anything like that. But even so, if there was such a scheme that people could build themselves, their houses for £25,000 in Jersey, that would be one to go for, wouldn't it? I wouldn't be opposed to it if they built it up to regulations. If they, but we used to have state zone schemes like that, didn't we? Indeed we did. We did. So these are all things that Strategic Housing Unit will be looking at. So you've got a big task ahead. The programme is what? What's, what? When can people see the fruit of all this activity? Well program initially is 12 weeks consultation and then I tweak my proposals according to the consultation and um, then I lodge a report and proposition to the states. Will the states accept that? Time will tell. But that's in the autumn this year. Do they have to ha accept this in whole? Is it like the cherry picking no. expression? Can it be taken apart and accepted in parts? Because obviously it will tend to fall apart if you don't take the whole bag of it. It'll have to be taken in the main in whole. You can tweak around um, in the business plan bits, which is not published with the white paper. You can tweak around whether um, the number of units actually need to provide and all that sort of thing. But the the five fundamental principles of the gateway which we've already done so let's remove that that's up and running and working and much more equitable um allocation of homes so that's there but the strategic housing unit the regulator the housing association and the removal of unintended subsidy where it shouldn't be um they're, they're pretty fundamental you can't really take them away thank you very much indeed for your time okay, thank you Bye.